Hi everyone, Lothari here. I hope you're having a good Friday. Today we are doing a deck guide. Uh, I haven't done a deck guide for a little while, but we are releasing a new update to the Aratusa Team Nova meta snapshot today. So I thought we would look into one of the additions, Harold Midrange, in a little more detail. Now the evaluation team that work on the meta snapshot have classified Harold Midrange as tier 1. Many people have said that it's even better than Svalblood Self Wound and I would like to take a little moment to look at why that might be. Arrakis Queen, Consume and Svalblood Self Wound, the other tier 1 decks, are a little more synergistic than the meta has been used to over the last Last few months, whereas Harold Midrange falls back on this mentality of play good cards and win. Looking at the deck list on the left hand side of the screen, it may be easy to think, well of course it works better than these other more synergistic tier 1 decks, it runs direct counters to their strategy. But actually the reason why this deck is so good runs a little bit deeper. It's actually further down the deck list that you see the answer to this question of why Harold Midrange works better than decks of the same type. Decks that also take this mentality of playing good cards and winning. Skelliger, as a faction, has access to far better bronze cards than other factions, which means that they play for more value, they're usually more efficient, and they can better control around by themselves without guard cards to support them than in other factions' decks. This works towards allowing you to save your really good gold cards for far later in the game, where the value really makes more of an impact. In the other factions, a lot of bronze cards you just want to throw away, you want to mulligan them. But in Skelliger, you actually don't feel too bad using a lot of your bronze cards actively. Not necessarily proactively, but you don't mind playing them from hand in order to get you further into the round. That means that this deck not only has the answer to other tier 1 decks readily available, at least in part, but also makes it much stronger against decks of the same type, and also lower tier decks. Looking at the bronze cards, we see some pretty standard inclusions for Skellige these days. Dim and Light Longship can enable far more control options. Shield Maiden is obviously included for thinning. Svalbard Priest is one of the best bronze cards in the game at the moment, in my opinion. It's highly recommended to include it. It's a good long round engine that helps you push further into the round without having to depend on stronger higher value cards. Svalblood Butcher is just a good card, particularly for four provisions. Heimei Protector, great synergy with the Svalblood Priest, always worth including at least one of them in a Skelliger deck, and Svalblood Ravager again. It's, it's a marginal card in terms of value, sometimes you're going to want to throw it away in the mulligan, but it can be good value removal for a cheap engine, and bleeding can help you stay in the round longer than you usually would. There are two bronze cards that stand out in this deck that aren't seen so often in Skelliger at the moment. Cutthroat is one of my mulligan targets at least, though 5 for 4 with some bleeding can be okay. Uh, if if push comes to shove. Primal Savagery works very well for removal and of course if you actually do destroy something with it then it gets great value. The downside is that it doesn't put any points actively on your side of the board so playing it from hand feels bad sometimes and if you don't think you're going to be able to proc the death blow then you can remove it in the mulligan. Generally speaking, if you're looking at the mulligan, obviously you need to be careful not to be stuck with two shield maidens in hand, but other than that, the mulligan targets are usually the Svalblood Fanatic and the Cutthroat, and then the Primal Savagery, I'd say in that order. Among the gold cards, there are a couple of staples. Olaf, Svalblood Totem, Hjalmar Uncrate, Harold Houndsnout, we're used to seeing these in a lot of Skelliger decks, they represent good value. Svalbard Totem and Harold Houndsnout are very solid proactive plays. Olaf, classic Skelliger finisher along with Knut the Callus. Hjalmar on crate, very good removal, 
that's why we see all of them so often. Scowl also goes some way to helping us with some of the smaller engine removal and can be used for pure solid value as well. Basically anything that's boosted or has a base power of 5 or more, you're going to find good value with Ulfadin. It's just a solid value card to include. In terms of standout, there are a couple. We'll start with the obvious ones. Geralt of Rivia helps us a lot against Arrakis Queen dealing with Glusty Warp. It helps us in the Svalblood matchup against Olaf and Champion of Svalblood. It's there to deal with the, with the decks that play tall. Frenzied Dow might be a bit of a surprise inclusion, but with Arrakis Queen being tier 1, you know that you are going to come across artifacts in the meta. There is an ever-present threat of no u low unit decks where artifacts can be quite strong, dealing with Tainted Ale, dealing with Summoning Circle. You almost always combine Dagger Two Blades with Harold the Cripple, and on the turn you play them both, uh, worth a grand total of 20 points. Now, because this isn't a conventional engine damage list, it's tempting to save that for your last play, but actually that's not what Dagger is in this list for. Don't get me wrong, it's a very powerful finisher and it can and it can be used in that capacity, but we shouldn't shy away from using it earlier, even in an earlier round, to try and bait out a lock to try and deal with smaller engines, combinations of smaller engines, or one big unit, as long as it's worth 8 points. The fact of the matter is that what, because we're playing Dagger and Olaf, regardless of whether we have last say or not, something is going to run into tool removal if our opponent is running tool removal. Doing the maths very quickly, Dagger plus Harold is worth 20 points, Olaf plus Knut the Callus is worth 22 points. So you shouldn't be afraid to spread that value out over a number of rounds to make sure that we don't fall behind on card advantage if we're being pushed in round 2, to make sure that we win round 1 when we need to win round 1, which isn't very often. The point is not to get too hung up on Dagger 2 Blades being used as a finisher, even if it is a very powerful play to make. Talking a little bit about how the deck is played, it is mid-range, which means any length of round will suit it. It's not a deck where you necessarily need to have last say. Again, as if you're planning on saving Dagger and Olaf to the end, one of them's going to get hit by tool removal, you still have the other to play once that tool removal has been used. Again, it fits this mentality of play good cards and win, and when you are using that mentality, the important thing is to not commit too heavily. Particularly with Skelliger, the bronze cards are often enough to take round one on their own, so generally speaking you want to start with your lower provision cost cards and work your way up to the golds as the game goes on. One of the great advantages of a deck like this is that you're not forced to play your cards in any particular order. That gives you much more flexibility than in other decks, it means you can answer opponents' threats as they play them without having to worry about what your next play is. You get to think much more modularly with this deck than with others. So generally speaking, start with your low provision cost cards, work your way upwards to the high provision cost one as the game goes on, try not to commit too much but also don't be afraid to answer big threats to make sure that you get that strong round 3 if it's necessary. Of course, the easiest way to understand a deck is to play it for yourself and to see it in action, so let's jump into a couple of games. You know a deck is strong when you can win a card down, still, in Gwent, that, that hasn't changed after Homecoming, but... Uh, Shall we try to do it properly this time? We're still, we're still against Svalblood. We're still against Svalblood, so we, uh, it's the same game plan as before. We have Geralt of Rivia in hand this time, so we're fine. Uh, again, we, we want to be careful about the German Shield Maiden. Um, otherwise, we have a pretty, we have a pretty good hand already, but we probably want to get rid of one of the four provision costs. We can get rid of Ravager. We immediately pick up Olaf. We can get rid of the Butcher as well. 
Frenzy Dower we would want to keep, and because of the Shield Maiden, let's not risk the the third mulligan. So going first, we want to start again, we want to start on a proactive play. We don't have very many of them here. We have Harold, we have Shield Maiden, and we have Butcher. The problem with Harold at the moment is that we have absolutely no way of procking Harold. Whereas we do have a way of procking the Shield Maiden with Butcher. So we can we can start on that. Wait for her to finish shrieking. And actually, Longship is a good card to play Butcher on because it limits the amount of value that they can get out of, uh, of Longship. And it also allows us to play Tactical Advantage on the Shield Maiden without running into tool removal. This is a good Hyal, uh, Hyal, Skial target, or it was until it boosted again. Um, what could we potentially draw with um, Royal Decree? Probably Dagger. We could shut them out of the round right now by playing Dagger and Harold. I don't know whether that's too committal for a protector. It might be a little too committal for a protector. And again, we we are a little worried about Harold now because we have a damaged unit, which means Harold is very easily locked or removed. Um, we don't necessarily want. We don't have another way of procking the skulls, the the skull pals. So we can't just jump into it. Of course, the longer they play Heime Protector, the sooner it runs into um, Geralt of Rivia range, though that's not the ideal Geralt of Rivia target. Tell you what, though, Frenzy Dow is good against Totem, and that's immediately where my head goes to play. We could definitely consider Skial onto one of the four provision cost cards as well. Svalblood's very unlikely to proc the totem straight away, so we don't have to worry. We can we can play Skial and then the totem. I think that's the better play. Just deny one of the just to deny one of the fanatics. Force them to make a bigger play. They need 10 points. Ah, well, interesting, I guess. We're playing first, so we want to be careful about when we pass, how much room we give them. Uh, we can definitely play Frenzy Dow now, which gives us breathing room again, but now that we're down to five cards, we definitely want to consider passing relatively soon, particularly as they're developing engines. Do we want to give them last say? Last say in this matchup really doesn't matter because Geralt will either hit Olaf or Champion of Svalblood, um, regardless of what order they play them in. If it doesn't hit one, it'll hit the other, so it doesn't matter which one it'll hit last, which means we don't have to win round one. Um, I think we're actually okay passing here. They have to use a card to take the round. As of, as of now, they only draw if they pass now. Oh, they go for it! Wow, okay. We're meeting some very brave people on the ladder today. So we're going into a tied a tied round three. 
We can certainly get rid of the Ravager at this point. What's the worst card in our hand? What's the best card in our deck? That's the better question. So right now Royal Decree is probably pulling, pulling Knut, though Ulfadin and Hjalmar are both good choices. We can get rid of one of the priests and see what we pull. Fanatic's worse, substantially, but we have two ways of proccing it. It's interesting that they went to tie up the last round. Now we have a priest, we can play the Hound Snout more proactively. Because we have we have a means of proccing the skulls even if they manage to get rid of the Hound Snout, which they do. Skelliger doesn't have many targets for removal, so Harold is almost always sorted. We have last say as well. Okay, they're going to deal with the priest, but they've wasted a pretty big card in order to do so. We'll start to catch up with Svalblood Fanatic. Now, my very quick maths tells me that Haga, Two Blades, and Harold are fewer points than Svalbard, or, or than Olaf. So we want to play them first. Of course, we want to play Svalblad Fanatic before we play anything else. They're going to go for the very early... Oh, they they decide not to they decide not to destroy Vildkarl. I wonder if they're trying to get a renewal out of us. If we're like, for example, if we were to play Hjalmar now to remove Vildkarl, are they planning on just bringing it straight back with renewal? Do they have a bricked renewal in their hand? That's how I choose to interpret that, at least. It's a pretty weak play in round 3, but as long as we can stay within a couple of points, we don't have to worry too much, particularly if Renewal is not bringing back Vildkarl or Olaf. There we go. So Renewal is pretty dead. Running it in, uh, don't get me wrong, running it into Champion of Foul Blood is pretty good, but of course that's not what, what Renewal is supposed to be for. Uh, it's because they tied up the last round, I guess. It's a little weird. So now... Dagger Two Blades is a little bit in trouble, because... If it hits Champion of Svalblood, we just gain the more value back. So we want them to proc. We want them to proc Champion of Svalblood before we play Dagger Two Blades. And of course, we want to see. We probably want to see Olaf come down before we play Geralt of Rivia because that's getting more value at this point. So in so in that case, we can just play. We can just play Olaf. They're not going to have artifact removal. Oh, they are running Geralt of Rivia. Of course they are. But that means we've lost nothing by not using the totem. Well, seeing as they've used Geralt of Rivia on one, we'll just play the other now. And we'll proc the totem as well, for good measure. Come on, 
Now we have an interesting choice. We have an interesting choice because we have to decide what to play with Royal Decree. Uh, Orthodin is looking quite good. Orthodin onto the Blue Boy Lugos is looking quite good. I think that's the play to make. Not Orthodin, sorry. Kyama onto the uh, onto the blue boy Lugos. Just to stop them procking it with foul blood for any extra value. Okay, so we'll take this because we have Geralt of Rivia on to um, Svalblood Priest. Victory is ours! Here we go. Who's up next? As we stare at the Tainted Ale. We are looking at Svalblood. Svalblood should be favoured for us. Um, though it's, I think it's marginal. We do have a better hand than we had in the last game. Once again, we need to be careful of the Shield Maiden, but we probably want to drop Cutthroat, and we probably want to drop Primal Savagery as well. At this point, you can take stock and think, well, do we want to risk drawing another Shield Maiden? The other the other low provision cost cards in our hands all feel reasonably good to play. Uh, we have Frenzy Dow for the Totem, so I think we'll be fine. We are going first. We probably want a proactive play. We don't have Harold, so our best bet is probably just starting on the Shield Maiden. We can proc the Shield Maiden with the Priest. Tactical Advantage we'll look to use on Foulblood Ravager, just in case they're running uh, Geralt of Rivia. If we need to do it earlier, we can. We can use it on the Shield Maiden, but I think we'll be fine. Hey, look. Similar strategy. So now we're going to play uh, Heimei Protector as well. Now we've learned from previous games that Ravager, the Bloodthirst on Ravager procs after the deploy effect. So you only have to have one damaged enemy unit in order to get full value out of the Ravager. And it might be worth... Ooh, interesting. Gimpy Gerwin. It might be worth using Ravager early, seeing as it's not one of our best cards. We can put it between the Priest and the Protector and then use Tactical Advantage. Um... Let's just put Bleeding on the Shield Maiden, and then use Tactical Advantage. Of course, now we are running the risk of running into Geralt of Rivia, but I don't think we need to worry too much. It is a matchup where you want to push round one a little bit more, I feel. We have won it before by basically bricking Renew in their hand. That's also an option. By not killing Olaf, not killing Champion of Svalblood. We are in quite a good position right now. It, it's not a deck, it's not a deck where you have to worry too much about winning, winning round one. Um, and of course we went first, so we have to be careful not to lose card advantage. 
by falling behind on points. We are getting two at the moment, which means they would need a six point play to get ahead. Six point play is fairly easy for Scalia. So we'll just play a light long ship down. And that means they need an 11 points, 12 points even, to get ahead. Oof, yeah, okay. So once again, we can re-evaluate here. Do we want to... What do we want to do? We have a good passing opportunity here. For sure. And we start running into... We start running into the... We start running into gold cards that we might want to consider saving until later. We could use Royal Decree to pull Dagger and use Herald for a big swing, but I don't think that's worth it. I think we just pass, honestly. They need seven points, which is marginal. They have three? Okay, so it's not so marginal. We just have to wait to see what they do. Oh, they decide to go early with the Olaf, so that's going to be their target for renew, <clears throat> no doubt. Making it pretty obvious that they are aiming for a renew. They might not have it in hand, but they are at least not scared about using Olaf early, which means they have it somewhere in their deck. Once again, we can get rid of Cutthroat. We can get rid of Primal Savagery. If they drive past, we can play Light Longship. They decide to push, which is interesting. Well, we have we have the direct answer to Harold in Scow. Um, it's probably the best option. In this round, in order to get ahead, we should absolutely not be scared of using uh, Dagger and Harold. But of course, we want to wait until the. We want to wait until the skulls are off the board to do that, otherwise it's just going to be complete and utter chaos. We could also go the other way, but we don't have to be scared of using Olaf and Knut, but that's generally our finisher. So we'll just play the light long ship. I don't think we're playing for card advantage. Hopefully this hits Scow. No, okay. So we are going to have to we are going to have to do something in order to get ahead here. Um, I think now is as good a time as any to play Dagger for maximum value. Hopefully that incentivizes them to pass, but it at least gives us a good gap, should they choose not to. They go straight for the Vildkarl, okay. Well, we'll match them for the points they get from the Protector, at least. Now we can answer that with Geralt of Rivia, that's the obvious play. We actually... do we catch up? 
we're going to fall just behind if we play anything else, so I think we have to. The problem is if they are going to f follow that up by renewing one of the two of them, in which case we might just lose. But we'll see. They might be trying to 2 well us. There we go, there's the renewal. Interestingly, they choose to renew Olaf instead of Champion of Svalblood, which I guess makes sense because Olaf is technically worth more points, but I think actually what we do now is just knut on Dega and remove it. And therein we still have a finisher and they don't. Plus, we might still get into Ram 3 a card up. Well, they are certainly determined. They are going to try to they're going to try to 2-0 -oh us. We have no choice but to play into it. We're probably going to force the pass now. In which case... Thanks to Dega, we will just take the round. Um, this is going to get them one extra point, so we'll be just ahead by playing Frenzy now. Maths, how does it work? Obviously, Savagery and Cutthroat aren't fantastic. These these are good cards, though. Uh, we'll start with Svalblood Totem, seeing as it's the pro most proactive play. We'll continue with Harold. They might have an answer to it, but I mean, it's a play we have to make. We can't really avoid it. And it looks like they don't have an answer to it, so we will proc one of the perils. And we'll use Yarmar to kill the ship with one of our own. We probably should have played Olaf first, but this way we avoid playing into tour removal, because we can put Olaf next to... We can put Olaf next to the totem on the left, and then damage it, so that it doesn't get procced. Now we don't have anything that plays into Geralt of Rivia or any other tool removal, so... Victory! I hope this guide has been informative, I hope it's been entertaining and that you've enjoyed yourselves. Please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content, your support is also always appreciated and it helps me give more back to the community that I love so much. Have a great weekend, see you soon.